and thank you for taking the time to participate in the Huntersville Downtown Plan. I am Sarah McCauley, Chair of the Downtown Planning and Steering Committee, along with Lee Hallman, Vice Chairman of the Committee. The Steering Committee is a group of 15 citizens appointed by the Town Board to work with town staff and professional consultants to develop a new plan for our downtown. The committee's work recently started and community involvement is critical to a successful committee recommendation to the town board. This is the first opportunity for you to participate. There will be two other dates in March and May to review proposed plans and options for downtown improvements. The presentation that follows is called the discovery phase. It will provide current baseline information about the downtown streets, utilities, and land uses. It will also discuss challenges and opportunities as we go forward. Please watch the presentation. It is being recorded and you can view it at your leisure. Afterward, we will ask you, you a few questions and add comments to a map. Either online or in person, public input is critical in order for the committee to validate the recommendations being made to improve your downtown. During the presentation on Thursday, January 27th from 6 to 8 p.m., you can ask questions online through the town's Facebook page. Town staff and consultants will be available to answer any questions you submit. As chair of the Downtown Plan Committee, I encourage you to walk the downtown study area and visit with the business and service establishments. This plan is not just for nearby residents and business owners. The entire Huntsville community has a stake and vested interest in the outcome. Please take this opportunity to tell us what you think and stay involved as we move forward. Thank you and now on to the downtown plan presentation. Hello to town of Huntersville. Thank you for joining us in this first public forum as a part of the planning of your downtown. My name is Terry Shook. I am the founding partner and principal of Shook Kelly, and we are the lead firm in your master plan of the downtown. Joining me tonight is Larry Zinzer, who is a principal and partner in the firm and the chief uh, consultant on this project. Also is Henry Stepp, also a principal of the firm and our chief technology officer, and Alex Bordashenko, who is an architect with the firm and uh, is assisting Larry in the urban design. We also have, as a part of the team, Michael Holder and his engineers with Gannett Fleming, and they are looking at the infrastructure issues, and Bob Gibbs, who is a landscape architect with Gibbs Planning Group, and who is a noted national um, consultant in retail market analysis. As you can tell, there's a lot to read here, and I'm not going to get into it. But as we all know, we are subject to COVID rules, and that's why we are doing this virtual presentation. Now, you will note along the way, there will be many places for you to log your input in a chat forum, which is very similar to Zoom calls that I'm sure many of you have been on. But in this case, you can see the links that you can join so that you can log your questions. We are going to do our best to answer those questions tonight with the, uh, with the feedback uh, tools that we are given, but rest assured that every question that you do ask, we will be addressing at some point soon after um, the first presentation. Essentially, the master planning process is in three different phases. And tonight, the public forum number one, entitled Our Essential Downtown, is a culmination of a phase that we call discovery. We are trying to understand and have been trying to understand your downtown as much as many as you on this presentation uh, know it. And it's always a very difficult thing to do. But we are going to, as part of this presentation, give you feedback as to what we think are the essential elements to know. We want you to look at each of this information and give us feedback if there's something amiss, if there's some new information we need to know 
please inform us. Now, the second phase of this, we call organizing principles and alternative futures. I will tell you, these are two very key parts of our entire master planning process. The organizing principles is very important because these are the things that we can all agree upon. And that's the idea. We will try to boil at least down to five or six or seven key ideas that we can say, yes, as a town, we embrace these. Now, as we all know, as our parents told us, there are many different ways to solve a problem. That's why we have alternative futures, because there will be at least three or four different ways that we can implement those organizing principles, dealing with scale, intensity, transportation alternatives, all manner of things. And this is where you as a community get to decide. Phase three, final strategy and master plan, is that final phase where we decide which one of the alternative futures is the one that we want to carry forward, how we want to modify it, how we want to develop an implementation strategy to make sure that it comes about, and the development of the master plan to guide that implementation of the strategy. Three key steps. First one tonight is about confirming the data. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Larry Zinzer to take us through the information that we have gathered. Larry? Thank you, Terry. Good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Larry Sinzer. And uh, you might be asking yourself, well, how can I become involved with this process? Well, number one, you can attend and provide feedback during the scheduled public meetings, like we're having this evening with Public Forum 1 and the future ones with 2 and 3. There's also a series of steering committee meetings will be taking place throughout this process that are open to the public, and we invite you to join and provide feedback uh, during those meetings as well. Number two, you can participate online with interactive surveys and tools. Uh, two key tools that we have introduced with this public forum, number one, is a visual preference survey, which will be active between January 27th tonight and February 28th. Uh, you see the link to that survey, and we'll have more information about that in a moment. Number two is uh, the downtown master plan public input map. Again, that will be active as well between this evening, the 27th of January to 28th of February. And that'll be an opportunity for you to uh, interact with a, an actual uh, plan and map of downtown Huntersville and offer some of your observations and um, your, your desires. As part of that also, we have an opportunity here to visit uh, in person with town staff at the Huntersville Town Hall. We ask that you look at the project website for the staff availability schedule. And the last thing, you can certainly stay informed throughout this entire process with the, uh, the Huntersville Downtown Project website. You see the address there. You'll see within that uh, a whole uh, manner of uh, uh, resources that will be available to you throughout this whole process. And with the visual preference survey, I'd like to ask Alex to explain a little bit about what you might see when you uh, click into that. Thank you, Larry. Hi, everybody. Um, so this is a visual preference survey. Um, it's a wonderful tool um, to get your input. You can see there's a QR code on the screen, so you can either follow the link or take a photo. Um, it will take you directly to the website to begin taking the survey. Um, the goal of the tool is to help you, the stakeholder of this process, to determine um, your preferences for various types of community design and development. Um, this is a visual preference survey, includes 19 questions. Um, they're focused uh, around uh, themes of scale and form, uh, building types, which are directly taken from your zoning ordinance as well as streetscape design. So on each page, you will see six to eight slides and we ask you to select three of your favorite preferences. Um, at the conclusion of the visual preference survey, um, you will be taken to the interactive map to provide further input on um, specific project locations and things that are um, important for us to know about. Thanks, Alex. The downtown master plan Public input map is another great interactive tool created by the town. 
which allows you to actively engage in the planning process by sharing your thoughts on specific features or locations within the downtown area. For direct access to the online map, use your phone to scan the QR code located on the lower left of the screen or the adjacent link. Simply follow the prompts and you'll have access to the map. Once connected to the map, on the right side of your screen, you'll see a menu of several public input category icons, which you can select and click into place on the map within the downtown study area defined by the orange line. For instance, if there is a feature within or something about Veterans Park that you really like, you can use the parks and open space icon to add your comment. Or if there's a section of sidewalk that you feel really needs improvement, you can use your pedestrian improvement icon. Also, you will have the ability to post general comments on the map if you'd like to share and explain any thoughts, concerns, or ideas that you have. As with the visual preference survey, we will take a sampling or a snapshot of the comments to share during the steering committee meeting on February 10th. However, the town will keep the public input map open until February 28th, and we invite you to visit and post your comments during this time frame. Again, as mentioned earlier, the 2022 Downtown Plan Project website, letsplanhuntersville.org, is a great resource in the clearinghouse for information and documents that will be collected and produced as part of the master planning process. In addition, this website will provide access to links of this public forum number one recording, along with the ability to download the files of the companion presentation slides and photo tour. Furthermore, the website will contain links to the interactive tools prepared by the project team to help you engage throughout the planning process. You'll see also existing resources that were very helpful to us, the, the planning team, as we got started on the project. Your town has put together some wonderful planning documents ranging from the 2040 community plan, the bike update plan, as well as the open space plan, as well as some other design guidelines. These are all wonderful resources and we invite you to take a close look at these as we have. The public communication schedule. Uh, as mentioned before, there's going to be a series of steering committee meetings. The downtown plan steering committee meetings will happen throughout the entire process with the schedule that you see here, as well as the public forums. This first one here this evening, the second one uh, are options for the future on March 24th, and the third one, our plan for getting there on May 26th. Upcoming events. Um, just thinking ahead here, the next uh, downtown plan steering committee meeting uh, will take place on February 10th, and then our next public forum will take place on March 24th. Now, as we get into the discovery, which is the essence of the uh, discussion this evening, just want to give you an overview what we're about to take a look at. We're looking at the downtown context plan. We're going to be looking at infrastructure, which includes transportation, general infrastructure systems, environment and open space, and we'll be looking at land use urban design considerations, economic development, and also let you know that there is a downtown photo tour that will be um, included on the town website. Um, it'll be very similar to what you might see on a Google Earth, but it's more up to date. It's based upon our recent um, walkabouts through downtown. As we began our discovery process, the Huntersville 2040 Community Plan provided us guidance on defining the boundary and context of downtown within the greater Huntersville area. The Downtown Regulating Plan, Character and Connection Map, establishes downtown as a combination of Tier 1 and Tier 2 areas. The tier 1 area, defined in the dark blue, is centered at the intersection of Old Statesville Road and Gilead Road and Huntersville Concord Road and contained primarily within the quarter mile or five minute walking radius. Tier one is intended to encourage a mix of commercial and residential uses within a two to four story building scale. Within tier one, the town has also identified active frontages defined in red required along segments of key streets, including Old Statesville Road, Gilead Road, 
and Huntersville Concord Road along with Main Street, Church Street, and Maxwell Avenue. The tier two area defined in light blue extends to a one half mile of the center. Tier two is intended to include predominantly residential with small scale commercial uses within a two to three story building scale. In addition, primary green spaces and parks are depicted in green and the existing street network is defined by solid lines and proposed street network and connections are defined by dash lines. So to define the scope and context of the downtown master plan study area, we've overlaid the regulating plan on the current aerial parcel map, whereby the downtown boundary defined by tier one and tier two is depicted by the bold white line. In addition, current roadway projects and proposed new street connections are depicted in red and currently planned bus rapid transit and commuter rail transit corridors and station locations are also identified. Also for reference, town civic building and properties are highlighted in dark blue. Charlotte Mecklenburg school property defined by Huntersville Elementary School is highlighted in light blue. And currently approved and unbuilt projects are highlighted in the pink areas. Together, these key elements form the basis for our discovery process and preliminary assessment of infrastructure, land use, and urban design and economic development within downtown Huntersville. As we advance beyond discovery and into exploration of alternative futures and preparation of the master plan and strategy, our primary focus will be centered on the quarter mile tier one area and we will evaluate and carry forward the vision and key initiatives expressed by the downtown concept plan recently uh, provided within the 2040 community plan. So as we begin the discovery process, uh, the first element we look at is infrastructure. And what you see before you is an aerial view of downtown Huntersville with various roadway projects that are superimposed. And Alex right now is going to explain uh, a couple of layers relative to the roadways in the downtown area. So this next slide, um, we wanted to look at the hierarchy of the road infrastructure that you already have. In the red color, these are your arter arterial roads within the town of Huntersville, but as well as the, um, all the signalized intersections. Then we um, add to that network your secondary neighborhood streets and how they relate to the arterial roads. If I might add, there's some interesting observations as we look at this slide here. You begin to see there's limited connectivity to some of these arterial roads between the secondary streets, which presents some challenges and some opportunities as we look at um, the alternative futures. Um, next, we also superimposed um, some of the proposed streets that are in darker purple. These were identified um, as projects in your 2040 plan, um, as well as in the lighter, um, in the pink color, these are the new streets that are coming on board as part of your new projects. Uh, Vermilion Village, um, the town center projects, um, as well as a few others. So they begin to tie in um, some new connections, but we're still, um, as Larry mentioned, we're still seeing that there's gaps to the connectivity that exists in the downtown currently. So looking at the NCDOT traffic volumes for the downtown area, you see the different levels of traffic near and around downtown. And as you might expect, the volumes are higher along the 77 intersection with Gilead Road, and it decreases as you move toward the east. This next slide represents the various projects that are in the capital improvement plan for both North Carolina DOT, as well as the town. This slide shows the roadway projects in the downtown study area. On the left, you see a table of the capital improvement projects that are being led by the town of Huntersville. 
And on the right, you see the projects that are under NCDOT. A key NCDOT project is the interchange improvement at I-77. What you see here is what is called a diversion diamond interchange. Adjacent to that is the improvement for 21, as well as the intersection of Gilead Road. This is a project NCDOT refers to as a super street intersection. Another NCDOT project is the Main Street Improvement Program, which you can see with this overview diagram includes the addition of two new roundabouts, one to the north, which would be on the right-hand side of your screen, and another one to the south, the intersection of Mount Holly, Huntersville Road. On this slide, we see um, two transit areas and a quarter mile is highlighted in yellow. Um, this diagram is intended to show its relationship to the rest of your existing road network. Um, the one transit area is identified in the downtown and the other area is then identified um, next, next to the exit um, at I-77. The transit station at I-77 is the bus rapid transit station and the proposed station in downtown Huntersville is the Red Line commuter rail station. A key transit initiative relative to downtown Huntersville is the Metro Rapid BRT North Corridor project that CATS is evaluating right now. On the right-hand side of your screen, you see various um, snapshots from their presentation that I encourage everybody to take a look at. The website is printed across the top there. And you can see that they have been doing a lot of planning in the North Corridor, stretching back from 1998 to present time. What's important is in the short term, they understand the BRT will be an important link to downtown Huntersville. But in the long term, they do see parallel the opportunity to provide additional transit opportunities with the commuter rail station on the red line. And you see different ideas about mobility hubs that will be looked at as part of the CATS program. And they've looked at how peak and non-peak service will be provided for each of the stations. They looked at site evaluation criteria and they're reaching out to each of the towns along the way, including Huntersville, to have a better understanding of how this BRT system will work with their communities. Relative to downtown Huntersville and this BRT station, they're looking at two station locations, A and B, that you see to your left, and then diagrammed on the right. Essentially, the A station location is where your current park and ride facility is located. The B location looks at an expanded park and ride on the north side of the Torrance Creek Park uh, Greenway. These decisions will be uh, made together with the town of Huntersville as CATS moves forward in their project planning. Another key component relative to the future commuter rail station, we understand that CATS has looked at some preliminary planning for platform and station uh, as early as 2008. Now, some of the things that we'll look at as we move forward in our planning process are those key station area components. We'll be looking at the platform location, whether it's on one side or the other of the Norfolk Southern Corridor, and what that might mean in terms of uh, additional parking and redevelopment that occurs around the station area. But these are great existing documents that we'll be evaluating as we move forward in our process. Another opportunity is uh, NCDOT's pilot project in the city of Wilson, North Carolina, for essentially an on-demand public Uber system that would allow for uh, additional transit options uh, from the community to each of these stations. As we look at a 2040 plan, it gives us some ideas about the town's uh, planning for different nodes and areas of the greater, uh, greater Huntersville area as they look at establishing roadway class and character areas. You can see in the central area there, the mixed use node 
encompasses a good part of the downtown. And within the 2040 plan, there are different um, cross sections that are envisioned for the roadways that are classified in each of these areas. They range from major thoroughfares to minor thoroughfares, as well as local traffic. The ordinance as well provides some additional information on the nature of different streets within the downtown area. A key component of that is the, the particular attention to the spatial uh, enclosure that occurs with different setbacks and bill to lines. Other planning documents looked at the gateway corridors, um, certainly Gilead Road as being a major one and different cross section ideas for what Gilead Road could be in the future. Another street type that might be possible in downtown Huntersville is the Vunerf. It's a Dutch street, which is essentially a shared space or a living street where pedestrians have the right of way and vehicles are allowed, but they are slow moving in respect to pedestrian movement as well as bicyclists. You see a lot of information on this slide here. I encourage you to look at the right. There is a great short movie, uh, street films that provides some information about how these streets might work. A couple of examples in North Carolina, Wall Street in Asheville, North Carolina is about a 700 linear foot uh, Vooner or shared space. And you can see the character of activity that happens where pedestrians feel comfortable walking in the street and perhaps dining acti activities happen along those edges. Another one in Batavia, Illinois, is the River Street Vunerf. It's about 450 linear feet. And then to the right, you can see some of the ways that that space transforms. Again, pedestrians and cars sharing the same space. As we look at downtown Huntersville, and we understand some of the earlier planning, Maxwell Avenue presents a perfect opportunity to explore implementation of a Vunerf. It could be commercial in nature, and also transition into a more residential character. Another key component as we look at the details of the current roadway projects in and around downtown Huntersville is the Main Street project. In particular, the intersection of Huntersville Concord Road and Maxwell, as well as the Norfolk Southern Corridor. It's important to us as we look beyond these more technical documents to have a better understanding of what this means in terms of the streetscape and pedestrian activities in and around this important intersection. Again, these are just some of the technical documents that we as planners unwind to understand um, the nature of pedestrian movement in these areas. Here you can see some of the notes that have been generated by the town as part of that process when the roadway was designed. Again, a key aspect for us as we look at pedestrian movement in this area is to look at how some of your uh, neighboring towns have addressed the same similar situation where you have a main street that intersects another major street with a railroad corridor running parallel to it. In this scenario here, we're looking at Huntersville as it exists on the left-hand side. and the right-hand side, we're looking at Kings Mountain. And you can see some of the uh, amenities, improvements they've made in their sidewalk systems, as well as some of the landscaping to make that a more inviting and safer crossing of the corridor. Another example is in Waxhaw, two parallel main streets intersecting um, an NCDOT road, NC Highway 16. And you can see some of the uh, techniques that were used there in terms of crosswalks and sidewalks that extend that um, walkable environment across the railroad tracks. Again, these are some examples that we'll explore as part of this process to increase walkability and safety in and around this, this downtown area. Again, we want to share some of the details for the roundabouts on the north side and south side of the entryway into your downtown district. These offer opportunities for us to look at development that um, go beyond just the, the shape of a roundabout, but also create building edges to create that gateway into your downtown area. So um, after we looked at the street network, we began to look at how that intersects 
or works in combination with your um, existing um, network of green spaces, parks, um, streams, um, and also where there were opportunities that were identified in a bike plan that was adopted recently for um, connections in, in the neighborhoods for bike and pet connections, as well as um, in the yellow, um, the yellow circle ones are the at grade and bike pet crossings. You can see that there's three along Gilead Road. There's also proposed tunnel um, crossing um, where the Greenway and the new uh, Vermilion project is coming. This slide, um, we also looked at your the, the bike plan and looked at all the proposed and existing bike infrastructure. The ones that are in solid line are the facilities that you currently have. Um, the ones that are in dashed lines of various colors are the facilities that are proposed. They range from um, separated bike lanes to side paths, those are in purple, and you can see largely those are the ones that follow the greenways. Um, and um, we also, again, here showed where those connections, um, safe connections could be made within a downtown. As we look at measures of walkability within a downtown and or adjacent to uh, a transit facility, that measure is usually a, five, or a quarter mile radius which is um, idealized as that five minute walk um, from the center. Now in a pure sense, um, everything within these circles would be within five minutes. Now these two circles here represent uh, a center at Gilead Road and Old Statesville Road, and another one looking at the transit station so we can look at those comparative five minute walks. But if we add in the reality, of the barrier that is created by Norfolk Southern, as well as um, the walkability being limited to the streets, that walkability is actually diminished to the yellow boundary that you see on either diagram. It becomes reduced even more when we look at the actual sidewalks on those streets. So what you see on the left is a little less extreme than the one on the right, but they both are quite diminished in terms of that actual five minute walk based upon available sidewalks on available streets within your downtown. So that tells us that there's a lot of room for improvement in terms of street, additional street connectivity, as well as additional sidewalk improvements to achieve that goal of ultimate walkability within that quarter mile ring. And as we look at streets in and around your downtown, as well as the streetscape, it was helpful for us to do um, a photo tour to get a sense of what um, the pedestrian might experience as they walk about different areas of your downtown. On this first slide, we're looking at Gilead Road as we're uh, just emerging from I-77 on our approach into downtown. You can see the nature of the sidewalks is very fragmented. Uh, there's very little in terms of reducing um, any friction with on-street parking. And in terms of the landscape, it's very sparse or there's very limited median space uh, separating pedestrians from the roadway traffic. You see some indications of bicycle lanes um, that was part of the planning process with the bikeway plan. As we continue down Gilead Road, closer to downtown, you see some modest uh, transitions into uh, additional amenities, uh, whether it be landscaping or perhaps a little bit more groomed uh, median areas, but you can still see the nature of the sidewalks is somewhat uh, limited and there are some impediments along the way. As we approach the intersection of Gilead Road and Old Statesville Road, you begin to see some improvements, particularly associated with Huntersville Town Center, and the sidewalks are much wider. However, there's still some areas where there is very limited sidewalk or 
it's somewhat ambiguous with um, some of the surface parking and circulation patterns of adjacent uses. Here we see different sidewalk conditions along Old Statesville Road. Some are newer, associated with the town center project, um, much wider and have street trees and other amenities. Some that are associated with uh, the existing commercial development um, do have outdoor uh, amenities. However, given the limited sidewalk widths are not as inviting um, for people to actually enjoy those areas. You see some conflicts uh, with parking and sidewalks in image number six, where if you imagine vehicles parking at that front shop there would actually extend into the sidewalk area, causing pedestrians to have to either walk around into the street or find a way around the building. As we travel to the south along Old Statesville Road, you see a transition of different uh, sidewalk widths and conditions along the way. Again, we see a lot of opportunities for improvements and to provide a cohesive uh, sidewalk and pedestrian environment. As we travel north along Old Statesville Road, again, we see various uh, levels of improvements, uh, wider sidewalks closer to town hall. However, we don't see uh, the same type of street amenities on the opposite side of the street as we approach the downtown Greenway. As Alex mentioned before, there are some gaps here in the sidewalk and experience that uh, we have the opportunity to, to bridge uh, to make these connections to these, these great amenities in the downtown area. As we travel along Huntersville Concord Road, you see the various conditions here. Again, reduced uh, widths on the sidewalks provides some challenges in terms of pedestrians uh, in this area. There's also some servicing that occurs along the street. You see in this image number three, where there is a service vehicle actually uh, pressed up against the sidewalk there, creating a, a corridor. Again, more conditions as we look at Huntersville Concord Road. I think some of the key takeaways for us are that there are various levels of sidewalk conditions and there's an opportunity to bring some uniformity um, to these sidewalks in keeping with some of the more recent improvements that have occurred around some of your municipal buildings and projects. As we extend farther away from the downtown core along Huntersville Concord Road, you can see the various um, states of sidewalk and uh, lack thereof, again, presenting some opportunities to provide those connections as we look at the master planning process. Your Main Street, um, we understand, will go through a transformation as part of the Main Street project, uh, but we wanted to get a better understanding of how it sits right now and what are some of those short-term improvements that can be made to enhance walkability and that commercial experience along your Main Street. As we continue along Main Street, adjacent to Veterans Park, we see some of those more recent improvements uh, that include street trees, as well as pedestrian amenities, benches, uh, waste receptacles, different forms of public art. We assume and hope that this is the, um, the goal to include as many of these amenities for all the streets in the downtown area. So we did, we wanted to analyze the um, how much surface parking and as well as structured parking are in the downtown area presently, just to understand um, how much parking that is already there can support the any development that may be proposed or what changes might need to be made. Um, in the dark, in a red color, that's all the surface parking lots that are in the downtown study area. The lighter shade pink are all the new surface parking lots that are will come on board um, as part of the several new projects that were identified earlier. And finally, the dark um, red brown color you see um, closer to the center of the downtown, that's your structured parking deck um, behind the discovery place. 
So this helps us um, as we go forward, analyze um, how much parking is available and where there might be additional parking needed. And we understand that there was a downtown parking study done back in 2006, which looked at the available parking within a quarter mile, a half mile, and even eighth mile of the downtown. And you can see those facts and figures there. This is prior to uh, the parking deck that Alex mentioned early on. If we look at the parking situation currently in the, the downtown core, that quarter mile ring, this is what we're seeing on the ground right now. Total of about 810 spaces, 35 of which are on street associated with Main Street. There's close to 500 spaces off street and surface lots, um, various public and private um, properties in and around that core area. And then the off street structured parking which is 280 spaces. So there seems to be ample parking. It's just a question of the quality and nature and accessibility of each of these spaces in the downtown core area. A key piece of information that we'll be looking at as we look at the various alternative features in the ultimate master plan is the amount of parking that's required by the ordinance. We know that sometimes there's the required parking, there's also the market demands um, associated with each of these different uh, building types and projects that occur. So we'll be mindful of that as we look at um, the integration of parking as part of the master plan. Um, this next slide is similar to what you saw earlier with um, your um, street infrastructure, infrastructure as well as new streets that are coming, the parks and green space, but we also wanted to lay over top of this um, the topography to understand where there might be opportunities um, for potentially additional park space, um, some stormwater management um, areas, um, where we might make want to make those connections, where uh, maybe a new development should not go. So this is a very helpful tool as we move forward um, in. Um, coming up with several different alternative futures. And to highlight a few of those key open spaces, uh, of course, on the left, we have uh, a more urban plaza space. It's defined by the Huntersville Town Center. And you can see some of the amenities associated with that, as well as uh, you have a great Veterans Park at Maine and Maxwell, which serves as that, that public lawn, that public green um, in your downtown. And then you have um, here recently, uh, and still somewhat under construction, your downtown greenway, which is an amazing amenity that uh, tracks from your downtown to some of the neighborhoods um, in the Northwest quadrant of your downtown. So I think the challenge for us as we look at the master plan is how do we begin to link these different open spaces together and provide additional open spaces? So this next slide um, is an evolution of a previous slide, um, but we also took off the road infrastructure. So here we want to look at the topography. Um, also, we looked at um, which parcels are owned by the town. These are highlighted in blue. As, um, as well as um, the school property. Um, you can see that in a light, light blue color, as well as a light green color identifies parcels that have no structures on them. So these parcels are potential um, locations where we could look at stormwater management um, areas, um, some can of various scale, some can be very small um, linear parks and some may need to be um, bigger projects. Um, again, this will be very helpful to us um, as we move forward um, with, with alternative futures. Another key infrastructure component is wastewater capacity. And we know that uh, Huntersville and the east side in particular is within the WSACC service area. Capacity is nearing its limit and additional capacity is scheduled to be online in the year 2024. 
So certainly as we look at the short-term redevelopment of Huntersville, this is something certainly we'll have to be mindful of. As we look at land use and urban design as part of the discovery process, one of the first things we take a look at is uh, the existing parcels and building footprints, or what we call the figure ground of buildings and patterns within the downtown area. And it's revealing to us as we look at these patterns, because we begin to see different um, districts and neighborhoods that are adjacent to the downtown area. They're well-defined and you begin to see some of the, uh, the relationships of those buildings to each other in terms of creating streets, creating street edges and public open spaces. When you look at the downtown internal area there, you see some areas where there are some of those patterns, but you also see some dispersed patterns or patterns that perhaps are not as uniform as one might expect in a downtown area. We understand that some of that is a function of some of the natural open spaces in the downtown, but it's also a function of some of the patterns of development that have occurred in the past and some of the things that are happening now. But it gives us an opportunity to look at how we might create um, patterns that make for a better walkable downtown. As we look ahead, it's important to recognize the achievements of the 2006 downtown master plan, which was the culmination of an intensive community input process back in 2004. As you can see in the tables to the left, a number of significant key initiatives and projects have been accomplished. Note though, these are significant recommendations but not all the recommendations. With land use, we certainly look at the zoning and you can see the zoning patterns within and around the downtown area. The overall boundary area of the downtown is about 370 acres. And you can see the percentages of the different districts that make up the downtown. The greater percentages are, of course, the town center district area, about 130 acres or 35%, surrounded by the neighborhood residential district at 46%. That transitions into the general residential neighborhood, as well as some pockets of highway commercial on the west side of the town and neighborhood commercial on the north and south. The design guidebook created by the town provides guidance on the regulations and characteristics of permitted building types in each zoning district within the greater Huntersville area. As depicted in this helpful table, zoning districts are listed in the column on the left and the permitted building types for each are shaded within the columns on the right. As mentioned earlier, the downtown study area is comprised of five zoning districts, indicated here with the red stars. The guide breaks out each building and lot type into individual pages, which describe its characteristics, regulations, and representative images. In addition, on the right side, for each building type, we have identified existing buildings within or nearby the downtown study area that appear to reflect some of the key attributes of the type. Urban workplace is typically defined by ground floor commercial, 15,000 square feet or greater, with up to three stories of office or residential above. The shop front building type is associated with ground floor commercial, less than 15,000 square feet, with up to three stories of office or residential above. Currently, the closest examples of the shop front type in the downtown area are the commercial Main Street buildings and shops along Old Statesville Road, as you can see in image one and two on the right. In addition, there are several great examples of adaptive reuse of detached homes for businesses, such as the Crafty Guys Beer or Crafty Beer Guys tap room in image number three. Highway Commercial is located on the western edge of downtown along Statesville Road in the intersection of Gilead Road. 
The images on the right are examples of highway commercial buildings in this area. Currently, there are only limited examples of apartment building types in the downtown area, as depicted by the images on the right, which range in scale and synchronicity with the characteristics defined for this building type. However, we understand that there are a couple of projects in the downtown area which have been approved recently with apartment buildings in accordance with these guidelines. Currently, there are several examples of detached building types in the downtown study area, which range in scale, density, and setbacks from the street, as indicated in these range of images, one, two, and three. The attached house building type is also found in the downtown area, primarily in the form of duplex houses. A particular note is the Alton building located on 117 South Statesville Road and seen here in image number two. This historic two-story brick flat roof duplex was constructed in 1913 and is the only multifamily property of its age and configuration in Huntersville. Downtown Huntersville has several civic building types, including several churches, notably Huntersville Presbyterian Church on Old Statesville Road. Civic buildings also include the post office and elementary school located on Gilead Road. You will also have an opportunity to view more examples of each building type in a visual preference survey mentioned earlier in this presentation. As we look at land use and urban design, another helpful tool for us has been the town's GIS department in providing us some 3D visuals of the current downtown form. It gives us an understanding of the scale of some of the newer buildings, as well as some of the existing buildings in and around the downtown core area. This will be helpful for us as we look at redevelopment opportunities and providing sensitive transitions uh, to the existing neighborhoods. So um, at the beginning of the discovery process, we asked your steering committee to um, name some of their favorite um, towns that they see as inspiration for the downtown Huntersville. Uh, some of the names that we heard were um, downtown Davidson, um, downtown Belmont, as well as we received from your steering committee members, images of downtown Matthews, as well as Kannapolis, some of the places that we may want to emulate or learn from. So we completed an analysis of quarter mile uh, walking radius of these downtowns as well as we looked at how does Huntersville compare to these other four towns. So you see Huntersville is at the top um, left corner um, and the other towns follow. So the, thing, um, the key elements we looked um, in this diagram were um, the amount of active shop, shop fronts in the downtowns, um, what is the relationship of the rail line, which is actually a very interesting this, um, component of these. All of these towns have an old rail line going through the center of the town, um, some around perpendicular to the main street, um, and many of the, these are in um, a parallel configuration. We also looked at a relationship of green space. Um, some of these towns had large green spaces, some of them had a collection of um, large as well as smaller scale green spaces in the downtown, as well as the blue dot um, shows the location and as well as um, by the number of blue dots, you can see the quantity of the on-street parking that is provided in downtown. Um, so you can clearly see there's quite a contrast um, in different, in all these towns, but also how does that compare to um, the downtown Huntersville. And what may that, that suggest um, that we may need to look at um, if we want the Huntersville to um, take some of the elements from these other places that um, your committee identified as successful. 
Um, so, and also within each of these towns, we looked at several different categories. We looked at main streets and try to um, tease out some common um, elements in all of the, their main streets. So we can see that these downtowns have wide sidewalks along their shopfronts. They have um, spaces for outdoor dining. So their sidewalks in many places are wide that it's safe for people to dine and also walk on the sidewalks. They have decorative street lights. They have signage strat strategy. Um, they have some elements of public art. Um, the on-street parking is within easy access to the retail and restaurants. Um, the, in, in many of these places, the power lines um, appear to be underground, so they don't become part of the visual clutter of the main street. So the real focus is on the uh, pedestrian experience. We also looked at um, residential streets and in single family neighborhoods. Um, the observations um, are here on the slide. Uh, we see that a lot of these homes are one or two stories. Um, many of them have alleys um, behind the buildings, while some of the other, some buildings have garages that are tucked um, towards the back of the lot. Um, there's predominantly a traditional um, architectural expression um, many of them have porches that engage just the street. The sidewalks are uh, present in both the older historic neighborhoods as well as new developments, um, landscaping that is well maintained. Um, and when there's a variety of um, materials, particularly brick, it wraps the whole um, um, form of the building structure. And um, as you can see, Huntersville compares pretty well to these other towns. The, I think the quality of the housing you have is on par with the other um, towns that were selected. Um, next, we looked at residential streets that have multifamily projects. Um, these, we found that these are two to, two to four story buildings. Uh, the building types range from townhomes, um, live work, um, units, apartments, um, some are mixed use, some projects as in Belmont are, um, uh, it's a reuse of a historic mill. Um, there's a more of a variety of architectural expressions here. We see some um, buildings that are traditional while others are leaning more towards um, contemporary. Um, there are storefronts on ground level, um, sidewalks are available, landscaping that is well maintained, um, and similar thing about materials that they're um, consistent and carefully um, selected. Um, we also looked at green space. Um, and so downtown Huntersville has a wonderful veterans park that's been recently constructed. Um, similarly, Davidson has a, a green, um, as well as they have um, the benefit of having um, College of Davidson has plenty of green space as well. Then um, downtown Matthews has several parks. Um, Kannapolis has added quite a bit of infrastructure. So all these places have at least one green within a downtown core. These are directly accessible off of their main streets. These provide wonderful gatherings for um, concerts, festivals, and fairs. So they're flexible spaces that can be um, configured to whatever activity um, or event is taking place. Um, some have formal bandstands while others have more informal stages like Davidson, they're using their public library for that purpose. Um, some parks have playgrounds, playgrounds, um, and um, they also have some smaller public spaces that exist within a quarter mile radius as well. And finally, we looked at um, parking in all the, the four or five towns identified. Um, so um, the off-street parking is mostly screened by buildings. So it's towards, um, it's behind the main street buildings. 
Um, some of them are in the green, we call them green landscape rooms. Some are um, as seen in Belmont, they're um, screened by building structures. Um, there's plenty of on-street parking. Sometimes they're diagonal, sometimes they're uh, parallel to the sidewalk. As we look at economic development, the first thing we want to do is have a better understanding of the land ownership patterns in and around the downtown area. So I'll ask Alex to please explain a few of these patterns. So on this particular diagram, um, we see that at the core of downtown, a lot of the property is owned by the town of Huntersville. Um, there's also some park land that's also um, in, a, in town. Um, the lighter blue is a CMS property. So here we're, we're looking at um, what might there be a like public. So on this diagram in the blue, we see um, town properties and there's a good cluster of them at the core of the downtown. There's also some green spaces and parks um, as well as we wanted to call to your attention the location of the CMS property that's in close proximity to the quarter mile um, for the downtown. Um, we also here wanted to include the connectivity network, the existing street infrastructure, as well as existing and proposed bike routes um, and how those may um, intersect with each other. Um, here, as we uh, get into the next slide, we see, we begin to fill um, the pattern in with the new development that's coming on board. These developments are within the downtown core. Um, these are large parcels of new projects, um, and they are identified in the pink purple color. Um, this diagram, which may look familiar to you as we sh um, showed it earlier, it shows in the light green color are all the parcels in the within the study area that um, don't have any structures on them. So those provide opportunity to look at um, either infill development or if there are clusters of um, parcels, may look at larger scale development um, as well as um, town owned properties um, identified as well on this map here. Thanks, Alex. I would also like to note that along with these undeveloped properties, there's always a potential that properties with structures on them could redevelop in the future. Then we also look at the patterns of existing private ownership relative to these town owned properties, the CMS property, as well as these emerging projects. And we begin to see some aggregations of properties uh, of one or two or, or three or four parcels that may be future projects based upon individual land ownership and desires in terms of uh, future development. But it helps us understand the realities of future development um, based upon these ownership patterns, particularly in the downtown core area. If they would be infill at a more incremental level or if there would be larger aggregations of properties that would be conducive to a larger project. These are the realities that we wanna be mindful of as we construct a master plan that fits within these patterns. As we look at those recently approved, unbuilt and proposed development projects within that one half mile of downtown, we begin to see um, the scope of residential and commercial development. You can see in the summary below that there's close to 100,000 square feet of commercial development planned within that half mile radius. And when we look at the new residential that's brought on with the existing residential, we're looking at just over 1,300 units of housing within that half mile radius. As our colleague Bob Gibbs has begun his retail analysis, he's looking at downtown Huntersville within that context of the 10 mile radius. 
as he identifies his primary trade areas. You can see represented in these diagrams on this dashboard here. Within that primary trade area, there's approximately 150,000 people. And the median household income about $97,900. And the average household income, 128,000. Some of the interesting information that we're learning is that there's $2.5 billion of spending within that trade area. And only $1.9 billion in sales. And that means that there's $600 million or 24% 24 of leakage outside that primary trade area. This is money that would otherwise be spent within that is being exported outside of the trade area. So that offers us some insight on opportunities on capturing some of that in the downtown area, as well as the greater Huntersville primary trade area. As we look closer to the downtown core, Gibbs is looking at about 30,000 square feet of commercial development within that down core. And if we look at the greater uh, half mile area, about 140,000 square feet of commercial development, which includes office and retail. The downtown rents are about $22.40 per square foot per year. And the vacancy rate is 0.6%. This is just a glimpse of information that Bob's, Bob and his team have put together. More information will be coming and presented during the next steering committee meeting. As we conclude public fund number one, we would like to remind everyone that we are wrapping up the phase one discovery part of the master planning process, which together with your inputs will help inform phase two, where we will define organizing principles and develop alternate futures, as Terry mentioned earlier. And upcoming events include the downtown plan steering committee meeting number three on February 10th and the public forum number two on March 24th. So we have presented a lot of information about what we have found so far with more information to be collected. Now we're at a point where we need to hear from you. As was mentioned at the beginning, there are a number of ways that you can. Number one, a visual preference survey it is intended to allow you to provide us with some of your preferences on building form, scale, and types, along with open spaces and streetscape. Also number two, an interactive map of the downtown where you can provide inputs relative to several categories related to the future development of downtown Huntersville. In addition, you will have the ability to post general comments on the map if you'd like to share and explain any specific thoughts, concerns, and ideas. And number three, you can visit downtown hall in person to view display exhibits created with the slides presented this evening. And as a reminder, the 2022 downtown plan project website, letsplanhuntersville.org, is the clearinghouse for information and documents that will be collected and produced as part of the master planning process. In addition, this website will provide access to links of this public forum number one recording, along with the ability to download files of the companion presentation slides, along with the photo tour. Furthermore, the website will contain links to the interactive tools prepared by the project team to help you engage throughout the planning process. On behalf of the town of Huntersville and our project team, Thank you for attending Public Forum Number One together with us, and we look forward to responding to your questions during the live stream event this evening of January 27th between 6 o'clock p.m. and 8 o'clock p.m.